Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Tilly and if you're new here, I am a strength and conditioning coach. I have my masters and my bachelors in exercise and sports science. Having worked with lots of general population and a lot of athletes, running is still the go-to activity to improve your endurance or to improve your fitness overall. If I had a dollar for every time one of my athletes said, oh, I'll just go for a run as my form of conditioning, then I would not need to make YouTube videos and or ever work again. The running propaganda is literally everywhere. From from apps like Couch to 5K or Zombie Run, which I do love. The pressure to run is insane. And if you don't like it, then I feel like you might be an outcast of the fitness community. So today I thought it would be fun to go through some research that suggests that running probably isn't the go-to activity that you should be doing. Some of you may already know that running is a great way to improve your endurance. But what you may not know is that there are two main forms of endurance. These are high intensity exercise endurance and low intensity exercise endurance, which is H-I-E-E -E or L-I-E-E. -E. High intensity exercise endurance discusses our ability to repetitively engage in high intensity efforts. And these are usually classified as things above the lactic threshold. Or they're activities that require repetitive performance of high power, high velocity, or high force movements. So when I say H-I-E-E, -E, I want you to think of of team sports, weightlifting, strength training, sprint training, things like that. Low intensity exercise endurance or LIEE -E, on the other hand is your ability to repetitively engage in sustained efforts. They are low intensity. Think of things like a 5km jog, a walk or a hike. Any activity that lasts more than a few minutes. Another distinguishing factor about these types of endurance is that they target different energy systems. So LIEE -E, targets the aerobic system and HIEE -E targets the anaerobic system. Here I'm just going to quickly put a graph for you to see how the energy system contributions change depending on what activity we do. Feel free to pause the video if you want to have a look at that. LIEE -E would mostly fall in the aerobic training sessions and then HIEE -E would mostly fall in the anaerobic systems. Now some of you may be thinking how on earth could running be considered a low intensity activity? You might be thinking every time I go for a run I literally feel like I want to die. So how on earth is this low intensity? And it, simply put, it comes down to how our body responds to the activity. It talks about what enzymes our body uses, the energy systems that our body uses, and it has to do with the duration. If something is high intensity, you cannot do it for a long amount of time. In the research, because running is usually a sustained activity, I'm thinking like long distance running or 5km jog, like I said, it cannot be considered high intensity. Cue the angry runners. Now, while understanding these basics, I still haven't talked to you about why you should not be running or why you should not be doing L-I-E-E. -E. This all comes down to what happens in our body when we do low intensity activities and how this completely contradicts what we need to succeed in team sports and other activities. For team sports, we need to be strong, we need to be powerful and we need to be fast. When we train for low intensity activities, we usually get the following. We get a decrease in type two muscle fiber content and a shift towards type one muscle fiber content. We get decreased rate of force development and a decrease peak force output, we get decreased power generating capacity, and decreased hypertrophic potential. Now while all of this can sound really complex and hectic, I'm going to break it down a little bit more point by point so that you can see that it's really not. Let's start by talking about the first point. Training for low intensity activities like a long run causes a shift away from type 2 muscle fiber content towards type 1 muscle fiber content. Type 2 muscle fibers, aka fast twitch, can be broken down into two main groups, the 2A fibers and the 2X fibers. They are generally characterized by their ability to produce high force contractions, they have high fatigue ability, and generally quite low endurance. However, they're also responsible for producing high power outputs, and when we're moving at high velocities like a sprint and we have to go into a tackle or we have to hit a ball, they are our only contributor to power. The amount of 2A fibers you have also is significantly correlated to your one rep max result in the snatch or your vertical jump height. This makes sense because individuals who have higher 2X muscle content usually produce higher rates of force development, so they're more powerful. Type 2 fibers also have greater plasticity than type 1 fibers, which means they can hypertrophy or atrophy really quickly, or in other words, they can make really big gains or they can lose all their gains very quickly. 
quickly. That reminds me of another point that I mentioned. Type 1 fibers have a decreased hypertrophic potential, so you can't get as big if you are going on long, slow runs. You can't pack on that muscle that we need, which makes sense when you look at the body type of elite marathon runners. So you're not really going to get huge if you're going for a sustained endurance activity. That's another reason why we shouldn't run. On the other hand, type 1 fibers are characterized by their ability to sustain force for a long amount of time, so they have excellent endurance, they're not really fatigable, but but they don't have any of that power or that high force that we need. And their contraction times are really slow. This becomes a problem if you're a team sport athlete or if you're just someone who is looking to get stronger, bigger, or more powerful. Simply put, because type one fibers have little to no impact on these type of activities. Some research by McCartney et al actually says that there is zero contribution from type one fibers when we're moving at high velocities zero contribution to power output, they are not relevant. So if you are doing long runs or a long endurance activity to try and get fit, you're shifting your body away from that type two fiber towards that type one fiber. And these fibers have nothing to do with our high speed movements in sport. Type one fibers have lower power outputs. They have lower rates of force development and lower force generating capacity. This just doesn't align with the goals of somebody who is a team sports athlete and it certainly does not align with you if your goal is to get stronger or more powerful. Now I know that sounds super sciencey and unfortunately we're gonna get into it a little bit more. The next point I'm gonna talk about is how when you engage in LIEE activities, you're gonna get a decreased power generating capacity. And you're gonna get a decreased rate of force development and peak force. And you guessed it, this is again due to that fiber type differences that's occurring. And it's also due to some of the bioenergetics that are going on in our body. But again, I'm not gonna make that video unless at least one of you can promise me that you're dying to know about the enzymes and you're dying to know about all that cell signaling stuff. Now I thought this point would be best illustrated by some diagrams. So I've made a little one for you here just based on some of the papers and textbooks that I've had a look at. If you have a look here, you can see that the force time curve actually shifts downward once you engage in LIEE training. You can see that peak rate of force development decreases and you can also see that your peak force decreases. This shift downwards occurs as you engage in more sustained endurance activities. So if you are a team sports athlete or you're someone who wants to get strong, someone who wants to get powerful, where on this curve do you think that we should be? By the state of my many potato faces in that graph, you can see that you want to be higher on it. You can get to this higher point on the curve by focusing your training on HIEE, high intensity exercise endurance. We want stuff that's going to target your anaerobic energy systems, be shorter duration in nature, and this will promote the adaptations that we need to move up that curve. Unfortunately, long runs, 5km jogs, big hikes, that just isn't the way to get there. The adaptations that we get from training for HIEE are an increase in type 2 fiber content, an increase in rate of force development, increase in power and force generating capacity, an increase in lactate buffering capacity, and surprisingly, an increase in LIEE. If you train for high intensity exercise endurance, you can also get improvements in low intensity exercise endurance. HIEE is also incredibly beneficial for endurance athletes who rely primarily on that low intensity exercise endurance capacity. LIEE on the other hand should be avoided by almost all other kinds of athletes. Now I know that this video might have the potential to irritate some people so I'm thinking that I'll finish up as always by giving you a few exceptions to the rule. Number one, LIEE will be okay if you're not competing in team sports at a high level or if you just play socially. If you have no real plans to move up on that team sports hierarchy and you just wanna play for fun, then LIEE might be okay, but it will still affect your performance in some ways. Number two, if long distance running is your sport, training for low intensity exercise endurance is obviously okay. I feel like this should go without saying, but if you're a long distance runner, you obviously need the adaptations that come from training for LIEE. However, do remember that you can get some benefits from throwing in some HIEE 
every now and then. Number three exception, if you just like running. Running can be a great way to make new friends, a great way to spend some time in nature, and a great way to keep your heart happy and healthy at the same time. If running is your bliss, far be it from me to tell you that you shouldn't do it. I personally haven't been able to run in the past few years, and I'm finally getting back into it with the help of some physios. I know that I'm excited to run, but I think because I still have goals of strength and power, I'm gonna be tailoring my running around that high intensity exercise endurance. This HIEE -E approach for me might look like a five second sprint into a 60 second rest. So we want those short bursts of power outputs followed by a long enough recovery time. And there we are. That is the end of the video. Thank you for bearing with me. I know this was a little bit more sciencey. I have put some of the references down below, although most of them are not public access. So you have to forgive me on that. I've got them from access for my uh, uni database. I hope you all learned something cool. I hope that this has given you a little bit of pause. So next time, if you're thinking about running, try and spice it up a little bit. We wanna throw in some interval training here and there. We just wanna try and mitigate that low sustained endurance. Please remember to like and subscribe if you thought any of this was cool. I certainly did and I love talking about this stuff. So if I could get some feedback from you guys, that would be awesome. I hope you all have a wicked week ahead and enjoy. See ya.